Great typography is a key pillar of great design. From readability to user experience to brand perception, there are more than a handful of reasons to give plenty of care to the way we present our text. In this lesson, we'll look at the properties available to us in Framer for making our text beautiful and functional. Before we start styling text, let's do a quick recap of how we add it to the canvas in the first place. To add text to the canvas, we can head up to the toolbar at the top and select the text tool, or we can press the letter T on the keyboard to switch to the text tool. And with the text tool active, I can either click to create an auto with text box, which is great for headings, and I'm gonna do just that. And for our heading, I'm just gonna type ship sites with style. And when I click away, you can see the bounding box around the text is tightly snugged down. And again, we have these grow presets on the properties panel where we can choose how and if the text box is allowed to resize. And this first mode is what we see on the canvas right now. We have the text box fitting the width and the height of the text. Another way to achieve this, if you like keyboard shortcuts, is just to press shift A on the keyboard. So if I go to the third mode, for example, and I make this text box much larger, if I press shift A, boom, switches to that mode that fits both the width and the height of the content in the text box. Alternatively, if I switch to the text tool and click and drag, it's gonna create a text box with a fixed width and a fixed height, which is perfect for things like paragraphs and area text. So I'm actually gonna paste in a little block of text that I copied so I don't have to type it all out. And as cool as it is to have an explicit width and height, it probably makes more sense most of the time to allow the height of the text box to grow and shrink if there's more or less text. So I'm gonna switch to the middle of the three modes here, which is going to be a fixed width, but an automatic height. Okay, now that we have some text on the canvas, let's talk text properties. I'm going to select my top heading here, and I'm gonna head down just a little bit on the properties panel until we see the text section. And we'll go through these properties really just from top to bottom. And the first thing we see here is a feature called styles, which is a powerful feature for making centralized, reusable style presets that we're gonna learn about in the next lesson. So we're gonna skip that for now. The next property we see is the content of the text box itself. Stripped of all its styling and without having to deal with any layers on the canvas, we can edit or copy or paste the text that is contained within the text box. We can also dynamically fetch content from a third-party API. We can populate content from the CMS, and we can also override variables when we get to components. But all of these things are for another lesson. Let's not worry about that stuff right now. Now on to the creative stuff, starting with fonts. When we click to change our font, we see a list of all of the web fonts available for us to use in Framer. We also get a nice preview of each typeface directly within the list itself to minimize guesswork. We've got a search bar at the top, so if you know the name of the font that you're looking for, you can just start typing it and the list will filter down. And then we also have a drop down here where we can filter the list down to show all fonts, which is what we're looking at right now, only web fonts that are sourced from Google and FontShare and built into Framer, custom fonts, which we have uploaded ourselves, or you can filter down to show only the Google web fonts or only the font share fonts. And then variable we'll talk about here in a moment. But coming back to web versus custom, we have over a thousand web fonts to choose from here. But if we do need to upload a custom font, we can go to custom and then at the bottom, we have an upload button here. And when you click upload, you get to choose which font file you wanna upload and you wanna upload a web font if possible. Ideally a WAF2 file because they're optimized for the web. They're around 30% smaller than the original WAF file. So if you have them both available to you, go with the WAF2. And when you've added your custom font, it'll be available to you for all the documents in your workspace. But I'm gonna go back and choose a web font. And for my headline here, I'm gonna choose a font called Roboto Flex. Also, one last thing I wanna point out before I close this modal is at the bottom, there's a button that says select all elements with this font, which is really handy if you wanna make a sweeping batch change to the fonts that you're using on your site. The rest of these default text properties will probably be familiar to you if you're coming over from other design tools. Depending on which font you have selected, you'll see the weights available to you in that particular font. Now, in this case, it looks like Roboto Flex only has one weight. That seems strange. You'll see why in a sec. Then we have color where we get our normal color picker, but within the color picker, we do get to choose between having a solid fill, a linear gradient, a radial gradient, or a conic gradient. 
I'm gonna leave this on a solid fill for now, and I'm gonna go with a dark gray, but not quite black. Then naturally we have the size of our font, which I'm definitely gonna turn up because this is meant to be a great big heading. So I'm gonna set this to about 50 and 50 what? 50 pixels. We get to choose from the text being a fixed pixel size, or the second option is to have the text fit the box that it's within. Now, when I set this to fit, the text size is defaulting to fit 100% of the width of the container it's in, and we don't have an explicit width set here. So uh, we've just got one FR by default, so it's filling the width of its parent. That's fine, but I could also set this to a fixed width or a relative width just to show you that as the box gets bigger and smaller, the text gets bigger and smaller as well. So now the size is dictated by the parent container. I'm going to press Shift A to go back to fitting the width, and I'm going to come back down here, and instead of fit, I'm going to go back to pixels, and again, I'm just going to set this to a value of 50. Cool, so back to a fixed size. Then we have letter spacing, which is the spacing between each and every letter here, also known as tracking. The default value for this is also measured in pixels, but pixels are an absolute number, and as the font size gets bigger or smaller, uh, that value is going to go from being practical to impractical, potentially. So we also have the option of switching from pixels to M's. And if you're not familiar with M's, they are a relative unit that is relative to the font size. So if I set this to, let's say, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, that's 0 0.04 of 38. Whether the font size is big or small, the letter spacing is scaling proportionally. And the same thing goes for line spacing. If I select the text below where I have two lines of text and come back down here to line spacing, line spacing is set to M's by default because you pretty much always want the spacing between the lines of text to be in proportion to the font size itself. So I'm going to increase this to 1.5. And what 1.5 means in this context is multiply the font size by a factor of 1.5. In other words, 150% of the font size is now the line spacing. But if you want to, you can switch this to percentage-based values and type 150 and get the same result. 150%, 1.5Ms, same thing. Or, of course, switching to pixels to set a fixed value that doesn't change if the text size changes. I'm going to leave this on Ms, though. Then we have your typical text alignment, left, center, right, and full justification. I'm going to leave this text on center because it's kind of a subheading. And while we're here, I'm also going to knock down the brightness of the color that I'm using here for this subheading. And now back to that curious thing where Enter has all of these weights to choose from. But again, when I switch to Roboto Flex, it's only got one weight, regular. Historically, typefaces on a computer have consisted of families of separate font files for different weights and styles. But nowadays, some fonts, called variable fonts, have adjustable axes that give us precise control over things like weight, width, slant, X height, and more, depending on how the font was designed. So back to the font picker, when we click to filter the list down, one of our filter options allows us to see only variable fonts. And I chose Roboto Flex on purpose. It's a great example of a font that has a lot of those adjustable axes for us to play with. And when you have a variable font selected, you'll see this variable property appear on the properties panel where you can click to reveal the variable properties of the font. Now, again, this is going to depend on the font. So depending on the font you choose, you may only have the option to play with the weight. You may only have the option to play with the weight and the slant. It depends on how they design the font. So again, this is a great example of a font that has a ton of things for us to play with, like the optical size of the font that will make it more or less readable at smaller sizes. By adjusting the weight and some of the details of the font, the proportions of the font are actually changing as I play with this here. So it's pretty wild, along with the weight itself, which I can increase, make this look more like a heading. And then we have things like the grade, which is similar to the weight, but it's not actually changing the spacing between the characters. We have the width of the characters. We can stress them out or make them more condensed. We have the slant, so we can achieve kind of an italic style, but to just the degree that we want it. 
We don't need to go any more or less slanted than we want to. Then we have all these additional parameters down here with Roboto Flex, like how tall the uppercase letters are, how tall the lowercase letters are. We can bring down the X height of the font. And there's some really interesting details here, like how the dots float above the eyes. They move in a very specific way that was designed into this font. And as you might imagine, all of this stuff can be applied to a range of text as well. So if I select a small range here, I can play with all this stuff to emphasize or de-emphasize a specific range of text. And if you've jumped ahead and played with animations, you'll find that each axis of a variable font is actually an animatable property. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with that. But again, that's for another lesson. To take our font customization even further, some fonts are in a format called open type and can contain features like alternate characters, ligatures, tabular numbers, fractions, and all kinds of other typographic capabilities. When you select a font with open type features, like enter, for example, which I'm using down here on my subheading, you'll find open type on the properties panel where you can click to bring up this modal. Now, again, just like variable fonts, what you see in this modal depends on the font and how the font was designed. But to get into the head of the font designer and see what options are available to you, you can actually just hover your cursor over any one of these features and you get a little preview at the top of what it actually does. I'm actually gonna zoom in on the canvas and let's take a really close look at the letter A here. We actually have a character variant within Inter called Alternative A. And if I turn that on, watch the A. Boom, it's a whole different letter form for the same letter. And in the future, if I know the name of the open type feature that I'm looking for that I want to enable, I can also just search for it here in the search bar. But this is a great place to kind of poke around and discover what your favorite fonts are capable of. And a lot of fonts are both variable and support open type features, which gives you a ton of customization options within a single font. So far, we've only covered the text properties that show up by default, but you'll find even more by clicking on the plus icon next to text, like shadows, stroke, paragraph spacing, transforms like title case or all uppercase, decorations like underline and strike through, and my favorite called balance, which allows multiple lines of text to have their lines broken in such a way that each line is roughly the same width, which can make headlines more readable and visually appealing. And there you have it. Now you know how to insert and style text in Framer with over a thousand web fonts built right in. Many of which have support for variable and open type features that give you an insane amount of control over your typography. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.